dialects of social infrastructure. What do we mean by that? Indeed, which dialect do you speak? Let me begin by sharing a personal experience with you. If you look on the sign behind me, you see, don't walk and walk. About 35 years ago, a friend and I emigrate to the, emigrated to the United States. He went to the state of Georgia, and I went to Long Island, New York. After about three months, I get a phone call from my friend, and he was complaining. You know, we don't have these signs, which are evidence of the physical infrastructure in the in an average American city, you will see these signs at major intersections or street crossings. Don't walk and walk. And he said, my brother, these walk and don't walk signs, they're plenty, of them too much. Oh. And guess what I told him? I said, my brother, make you obey these signs so in another man country we do. We'll come back to these signs later on. What is social infrastructure? What does it mean? The average leader or state governor or councilman will always talk about the physical infrastructure. Things like roads, things like hospitals, schools. Those are physical infrastructures. But what is social infrastructure? Why is it important? to have the right social infrastructure. Now, let me explain what that is. Basically, without using parlance that's all nomenclature that will confuse the average person, it basically means our values. What is our values? It means the basic codes and laws that guide the behavior of everyone in an average society. It could be in a village. It could be in a local council. It could be in a state. It could be in a country. That's basically what it means. Conversely, it means those things we consider unethical or unacceptable behavior. That's what it means. So then the question is, do we have a social infrastructure in Nigeria? Do we really have one? Well, quite a few of my friends, they say, we don't have a social infrastructure. They say that our social infrastructure is damaged, is broken, that we don't have one. And I tell them we do. It is just broken. It is not working well. Now, again, the title is Dialects of social infrastructure. Now, if dialects, if we use, if we refer to social infrastructure as we do a language, let me now use examples of uh, Igbo language. Do you speak the Elele dialect? Do you speak the Umoya dialect? Do you say uh, no? Do you say Ndewo? Or let me use the Ijo dialect. Do you say Tabarao? Do you say noa? Do you say do? One language, or in Yoruba, enleo, ekabo, bawoni. You see, which dialect, what, which dialect do you speak? Now let me explain this to you this way. If we refer to social infrastructure, the values that we all have, as though it is a dialect, then we've got to examine it a little bit more. What do I mean by that? Let me take the Nigerian pigeon. Now, most of you should know that there is Sierra Leonean pigeon. There's New Guinea pigeon. There is Jamaican patois. There is Nigerian pigeon. So if these pigeon languages are dialects of the proper English language, which one do you speak? Now, if pidgin English is a dialect, I ask the question, 
Can any one of us go to a university, University of Port Harcourt, University of Ibadan, and write your examination in Pidgin English? Would you write it in broken English? You'd say no. Now, can we go to Oxford University and use the Jamaican patois that Fino likes to sing in? He sings in Jamaican patois. Can you go to these universities and write their exams in Pidgin English or Jamaican patois? The answer is no, because it won't work. There's no way the professor will accept your exam. So then it is appropriate now for us to really understand the fact that the dialects, the way we behave, the things we believe as normal behavior, as social norms, is very important, isn't it? Wouldn't you agree? It is very important what we think about what it is right for us to do and what is not right. Why so? In sociology, in the study of human behavior and sociology, there is a mantra which says language and culture are inextricable. In other words, you cannot s separate between how we express ourselves and how we think and the things we believe in. You can't separate it. So when a Frenchman says, s'il vous plaît, or an American says, do me a favor, their, that language expresses their politeness towards each other. Or when they say, pardon me, please, that is the way they express themselves. Now, let's come to Nigeria and we'll take that pidgin English, which generally expresses what we believe. Let's now discuss the dialects that most of us speak. It has served us because from Kano, Katsina, to Makodi, to Enugu, to Oshobo, to Benin, to Wari, to Port Harcourt, to Kalaba, we all are able to communicate in the Nigerian pidgin. That is actually our lingua franca. Listen to what, have you heard this said amongst Nigerians? Let me share this with you. Not be Nigeria we day. You not be Oyimbo. The Nigerian factor now. You supposed to know now. What is that saying? Another one. He don't do. Now you sabi pass. These confirm a culture of mediocrity. Government money sweeto. Not be where person they work then they chop. Now turn by turn, oh. What does that say about our social infrastructure? You are 40 and below. And I've met quite a few brilliant young men whom I could father. But the generality of Nigeria speaks this language. That shows that it is okay. You go settle now. That it is okay for us to practice extortion. It is okay for us to practice thievery of public funds. Anyway, now we. You know who I be? That is our social infrastructure. When we say these things, we actually believe them. It's okay. They confirm the total disregard for process. The total disregard for order. And so we just, any way now, way now, you don't reach there, so we drive against one way, don't we? That is a broken social infrastructure. I'll give you more examples. Now, God be that too. You know, no, I'm. Now, Madam, Sister, be that too. It is saying that favoritism, nepotism, and tribalism is okay. That is our social infrastructure. So those of you who are 80% of Nigeria, oh, 40 million, 60 million of you. Is that the way we want to build this society? I'll give you one last one. Not be woman, she be. You suppose toast them now? Wait in. You know they give woman that kind of work? Gentlemen, has it been said? It has been said. That is the culture of chauvinism and, and gender abuse. 
in this society, we are saying it is okay. Is it really okay, really? It's not okay. That is our belief system. That is our values. Now, if you're keeping up with television lately, if you're watching CNN and BBC and Al Jazeera, have you heard the name Harvey Weinstein? What happened to him? He, you know what it is? He owned the company. He started the company. Guess what happened to him? He got fired from his own company. And some of you are familiar with even the late founder of Apple. Do you know he too got fired from his company? Because he broke social norms as a leader of his company. Because he ran his business the wrong way. They had to go back and get him. If you're 40 and younger, you have this job to fix this social infrastructure. We go yarn the pigeon English now, we go talk up. But Moku no talk those other nonsense. Not be woman, she be. What is that? How many terms is Angela Merkel serving in Germany now? How many terms has she been elected to? Isn't she a woman? She's a powerful woman. So ladies and gentlemen, young men, we have to respect our ladies. Don't we? So we have to do a sincere assessment. We have to really think about that broken glass. The social infrastructure that is so broken. Which now leads to the next question. How do we fix it? There is the top-down approach, which is a vertical approach. There is the bottom-up approach, which is a groundswell approach. There is the external force approach. I'll just focus on these three briefly. You're 40 and younger. Imagine if we have a 56-year-old as president... Or we have a governor that is 55 and he says, we're not going to do things the old way anymore. He begins to reconstruct our social infrastructure by passing new laws, by, by changing the mindsets of the average person. He doesn't move around with 10 cars to get from point A to point B. Wouldn't that make a big change in society? If he leaves office with the amount of money he took in there, but he makes money from writing books and giving lectures, wouldn't that be fine for you and me? He doesn't become a billionaire after he leaves office. That is the top down. External force. How many of us would like England to come and recolonize us? How many of us would like it? No, we don't want colonialism again, right? We don't want that. But guess what? If we were invaded by America, and America says, you got to do things our way, and they have all the weapons and power, we probably wouldn't be able to fight them, would we? No. But we don't want that. That is another way to change our social infrastructure. But I think the best way is the bottom up. We create a groundswell amongst the youth, amongst all of you, and you don't have to go and get guns. You begin to say, we're not going to think like that anymore. You have to act together saying, you've got to respect the ladies. You have to respect your co-worker. You have to be a good student leader. You have to be a leader in community, even if you are 28. And you do things in a way that shows that you want a better social infrastructure. So I focus on you, young people. Which dialect would you like to speak what would you like to do to change this broken social infrastructure? If a downfall driver was giving a visa to go to Geneva, Switzerland, will he drive his vehicle? Will he behave like he does in Lagos? By no means. Not even a driver of a public bus in Port Harcourt would. Now let me ask another question. If a university professor, a lecturer in the university, goes to any one of these countries to be a visiting professor, would you ask for money for handouts? You see, we accept that. That's what's happening. Our broken social... We are speaking a dialect that does not work. So, young people especially, you have to begin to say, we don't want to speak that dialect anymore. 
we don't want to speak it anymore. Just the other day, 26 died in the Mediterranean. Young ladies, they were deceived to die. But there are even young men dying. What are they going to look for? What are they going to look for? A better life, they say, right? Yes. You see, we have to now think of how we, which dialect of social infrastructure, which, which one do we want to speak? Is it the broken one? Or is it the one that will make this society that we all claim as our home more egalitarian, more useful to us? Every great thinker and every great leader, they realize that our values actually express what we desire to be. What is happening on, the, on, on especially the Western world now, it is a groundswell that is getting a lot of men in trouble. Because, this, they, they now, because social infrastructure is dynamic and the desire is to change it for the better. So we treat each other better. We do the right things better. That's what social infrastructure is. And that's why the young man who spoke about the etiquettes, the language we use on social media, even that tells us what our values are. So, what I wish and I hope would happen in this small group, and a groundswell will take on from here, further away, is that we are going to make a decision to speak a different dialect of social infrastructure. We just can't say it go better and not do what. We just can't say that. We have to construct new social norms that says there's a way for us to behave. So my fellow Nigerians, let me take you back to the story I referred to in the beginning. The young man that called me and said, this work and don't work signs, he too much, he too many. You see, that is a physical infrastructure we see in New York, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Houston, London. Which city do you want me to name? Even though, according to road use rules or driving rules, who has the right of way? The motorist or the pedestrian? Yes. The pedestrian has the right of way. But why will they have a physical sign that says, Walk and don't walk. Because even though the pedestrian has right of way, he too has to be regulated, correct? So he who has, is in a leadership because the pedestrian has more power, you jam him, you go go pay. The point of the matter is that even if authority and leadership and power is bestowed on us by virtue of laws and codes and a good social infrastructure, should we abuse it? We should not. So when the sign says don't walk, you stand. And generally at this intersection, you see them in these American movies, right? They all stand and there's a line of people waiting for the light to do what? To change. Everybody has limits as to what we can do. That's what our societies work. And so young men especially, remember you have limits. Everybody has limits. And guess what? Every Nigerian who emigrates to the U.S. or to Canada that embraces their social infrastructure, what happens to them? They do well. They rise. They obey the rules. But some of the ones that you don't see, that don't talk to their families, they don't write letters, they are in jail somewhere. That's what happens. And those of us who understood and embraced the as the, the American way, we excelled. So, ladies and gentlemen, which dialect do you speak? Which one would you like to speak here in Nigeria? Is it broken English? Show me your values.